Welcome back, everybody, to your moving day of the 2020 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. I am Kevin Jones, and I am here with my good friend and teammate, Luke Humphreys. Luke, are you ready for the back nine, man? Can't wait to see it. Six of the nine hardest holes on the course take place on this back nine, so it's a little tougher coming in. Can't wait to see what these guys do with it. Very good stat to start off the back round, or the back nine. Um, we have Drew Gibson on the card, who's five under through nine holes. That's a really good score, and look, he's tied for fourth right now. Two strokes off the pace for the lead, so Drew's in position for a possible Pro Tour win here. We've also got Vina hot on the putting green and giving himself chances from everywhere. It looks like all threes and a two from him. Kale, more bogeys than you're used to seeing from him. And Simon, one under. He's a little weak right now, but I expect that he will heat up on the back nine because he's just been playing really hot to start off the year. Yeah, totally. You can never count him out. So hole 10 is a par four. It is a really long hole, really. And the, the new thing about this hole is that there is a Mando making people not be able to hang out big Anheusers and get big distance off the tee. Yeah, in previous years, you've seen Simon and Eagle throw sky rollers, almost pin high left. They've taken that option away. So I'd say it's most likely a forehand. What are you doing here, guys? Optimal play is without a doubt a forehand in my opinion. I think the backhand just is a much more specific shot, a little bit less room for error. And you also have this um, OB to the right, which makes rollers pretty tough. And you kind of have to be a little bit careful with your forehands. Drew playing, I think, a mid-range right there. Not a bad play, but a lot of distance to cover. Yeah, agreed. So we just saw two backhand specialists in a row. I really... What disc is Vina throwing there? It looks That's like a, a fairway. It is. It's a 400 F2 out of Vina. Just stayed really straight for him. Wow, what a great shot from Vina. Kale also throwing a possible fairway. He needs to get down. Yeah, I think that's an H3 V2 from him, and it ends is just a really straight finish on that disc. I thought he possibly was going to get a skip. Simon's like, I don't care about the Mando. I'm throwing roller anyways. That angle is perfect, if you ask me. Needs to stay out of those rocks. Yes. Oh my goodness, does it look like it might have caught him up for a second. Yeah, definitely. Now with that OB on the right side, the roller is a much more dangerous line, but it's risk-reward. He's getting a lot of distance for it. Drew is showing off a sidearm there. That looks like he snuck inside the circle, possibly. It did. That was a DD3 roller out of Simon, too. So he's rolling a full-speed driver. Kale going back to that MX3 well. Oh my goodness. Talk about a straight flying mid-range. I'm telling you, it's like a longer putter. He is showing it off beautifully right now. Yeah, it's a great mid for sure, but I feel like he could do that with any mid-range. <laughs> I feel like I need a lesson just watching Kale. He's one of the best mid-throwers in the world, no doubt. Smoothest as well. Vina, beautiful shot there. Another backhand. Going backhand, backhand for birdie on this hole is pretty special. Yeah, really crazy to match the slope with the angle of the disc like he did. Very impressive. Yeah. Simon, good play from him. Uh, maybe a fairway driver flick, but uh, well done. And Drew cashing in from inside the circle. Trains it. Yeah, he's fourth in birdies for this tournament. He's got 45 of them. Um, so Drew, that is? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just birdying a ton of holes. It's a great way to start off the back nine for Drew. Kale as well. Good birdie from him. Looking like a star frame from this card. Showing you that it's not just a forehand hole. Backhand specialists can access it as well. This is really what you want as you start it off. 11th hardest hole on the course. But there were two triple bogeys, so the OB did bite some people. 37% got the bird here. That's cool. We just saw a star frame for us, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Very nice. Three different ways to get to the basket in two shots. I like it. Hole 11 made more difficult this year as well. It is a par 4, and it's going to bring in... You know, last year you could throw over the sidewalk on the left side on your second shot, and I, I think that made this hole so much easier because you wouldn't have to be very specific on your drive. As long as you got some distance, you are going to be able to flick something out there with really no regard to much. This year, the drive has got to be precise. Yep, yep. You, you need to end up more on the right side of the fairway for an easy access to the green. The further left you go, the more pinched you are with the Mando tree. 
that's a pretty good shot from Drew, getting yeah. probably a little bit more skip than what he wanted. But with Drew's distance, the way I've seen a few people play it is if they get far enough up the fairway and to the left, it that kind of makes a, a mid-range shot, a little hyzer mid-range shot, which is nice. But only the longest throwers can find that. Yep, agreed. Do you know what I'm talking about on I, that hole? I do. Yeah, the little uh, a flip up. Yes. Not full stand up, but uh, hyzer to flat mid range. I think we'll be seeing that out of Drew. I think so too. Kale is going to be. Uh, he might be playing for par here. I, I would say that it's going to be really, really difficult to uh, execute a birdie from there. Okay, that was a D1 out of Vino. And a PD2 out of Simon right here. Just a big spike hyzer. Did he catch a uh, road skip up there? I couldn't tell. It looked like it was high. Um, I couldn't tell where exactly he landed. Luckily, he did, he's inbounds now. So, Kale, really low. Yeah, I've got that ceiling issue to deal with. Gets a little skip, but outside circle, too. That'll most likely be a par. Yeah, so being high on the right side here opens up the flick line, which is just a much more high percentage shot, or in other words... Oh. There's more room for error on that shot because you can skip up the hill and be okay. If you throw a backhand, it's going to be very difficult to land it perfectly. Great shot from Simon. This hole is coming in over par average uh, as the sixth hardest hole that we're playing. And Donovan Smith, shout out. You hit a 136-foot par save on this hole. That's incredible. <laughs> wow. Congrats very nice. Congrats on that one, buddy. Bino M3, I believe, will... Looking for the low ceiling slide up, I'm guessing. Wow, so Vina really crushed his drive. Not a bad position at all. And mm, lots of ground to play, though. Probably more than he was wanting. I think he wanted to meet the hill a little flatter than he did. That's why that backhand is so tough. Yeah, yeah, with a right to left slope. Kale's going to be dropping in a par, no problem. Vina with a chance. Mm, Give it to him. Cash. Two in a row from Vino, starting to heat up, look confident with that. He throws his putt pretty hard. Yeah, it definitely is. There's a good backstop on this one, so no reason to have any fear. Let's see it, Drew. There we go. Wow. So cash. Great start. What handicap is this hole? This comes in at the sixth hardest hole on the course. It does only 26% of the field were able to convert on their birdies, and it, like I said earlier, it played over par. There's just a lot of OB, a lot of Mandos, and the pinch second shot, I think, is what does it. Yep. Hole 12 is a slightly different hole than years past. Uh, what they've done is they've lengthened it just a few feet, probably 20, 30 feet longer, and they've kind of opened up uh, almost a hyzer route. I think you could even get away with hyzer in this hole. It's still preferred probably to throw it flat, but um, forehands, you got to have a really big forehand to get it there. Yeah, I heard you, what you do, hit basket with a forehand hey, or something? Hey, thanks. I, I sure did. I got my forehand with the tail end, and I ended up hitting the basket. You're ridiculous. <laughs> So is Drew. That was a mid-range. Oh, my. Okay. Mid-range is extremely undescribable. That yeah. is a big-time mid-shot. Yeah. And this hole is playing longer than 293. I believe it's 373 or 393 uphill, so it, it plays over four bills, really. Like uh, Kev referenced, there is a hyzer route. Straight stall, I think, is probably, yes, exactly like he's doing. He's got to watch out for the skip, though. Needs to go. And just does. You see a lot of people land and then curl back out of bounds there. Lucky to not have that happen. KLD1 forcing it over. That's a good golf play from Kale. Not going to take a birdie, it looks like, on the elevated basket. But the mistake is to go OB early, and that would be a big problem. You'd be in some trouble. Yeah, you definitely would be either going to the drop zone or re-throwing. This hole came in as the eighth hardest hole, also playing over par. So back-to-back -back over par holes. Um, really just kind of a sucker placement right there by the gunite. It is. Grass is so thin, too, it's hard to land it right by the pin. Yeah, it takes a really accurate shot from the tee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is 
golden in my eyes. Drew made a big putt the other day, maybe yesterday, and and did the bow and arrow to the pin. That's one I know he wanted to give a chance, but that was so funny. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Shot it up into the air. It came back down and got it. <laughs> Finally, stop it. Feeling himself. Man, it's so nice to have such a clean looking round two. All threes and two deuces. Good stuff, Vina. Six under. He could heat it up coming coming down the stretch. Simon, very smooth. Also hits his putt. This was one of the harder circle two putting holes on the day. Only 8% of the people who landed in circle two were able to make it. I played with Tristan Tanner, and he banged one from outside circle two. Perfect oh pace in the heart. It was a beauty. Wow. That's an interesting stat, too. Not many people are making much or many circle two putts on this hole. I yeah. wonder why. Elevated basket for sure comes into play. Yeah. Maybe a lot of people playing similar to Kale, just, just wide, taking their three, not getting suckered in, and then not giving it a run just because OB is so close. Mm -hmm. And Drew, three is not bad on that hole. He's got another difficult hole coming up, though. Also, no bogeys. Our hole 13 this is a difficult par 3 that we that we're playing right here the big green tree on the left side of the fairway is playing as a mandatory so there's nothing that you're gonna swing out over that path because that's definitely the open part of the hole we definitely have Simon and Drew on this card so I know we're gonna see a couple spike hyzers the spike hyzers a great play um, let's see Vina. He's got a f looks what looks like a fairway in his hand, and he's going right up the gut. Yeah, this looks to be the straight play from Vina. This is an H1 out of him. Slight hyzer flip, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, the skip gets stopped by the tree. It looked like it might have been coming into the circle. Yeah, it was. It was cruising on up there pretty good. So Simon showing us the hyzer line. There's not much of a hyzer line directly to the pin, if you ask me. That white tree on our left there comes into play big time. Nobody wants to mess with that. So the idea of the spike hyzer is to do what Drew's doing right here. You have to saw it off just a little bit to the left. That's still too far left. No, I mean, that's great. That's great. Drew's showing us what, what you do on this hole. You have to saw it off. Or in other words, kind of cut your angle off just a little bit. Say, I'm not going to park it, but that's okay. I just want to look at it. Needs to skip forward. Oh! Just barely gets inside the Mando. That'll be an instant layup from Kale. I yeah. believe the water is so close to that. Yeah, there you go. You see it. Just about 10 to 12 feet behind the basket is the water, so... I love Kale's game. It's so much fun to watch. Vina, oh. nice. Playing a hyzer putt, so it's kind of floating away from the water. He gave it a run. That's good. What in the... <laughs> that was awesome. How ridiculous is Simon? That was awesome. I, and I feel like even if he would have went chain high, it was going to be close to like if he would have airballed it, that it still might have went in the water. Drew is pumped after that. Drew is heading for lead card right now, ladies and gentlemen. That's a big time putt for him. Sneaking a birdie on this hole is so crucial. It's a stroke on so many people. Well done, Drew. To keep it high enough with the water behind it, only 11% of the field was able to get the birdie on this hole. It came in as the fourth hardest hole on the course. And there was a nine on this hole. Eight sixes. 12 fives, people missing the Mando or finding water just came in as a hard hole. It, it's entirely hard to birdie, but even getting your par was tricky. Yep. Well, that was a fun hole to watch. The Spike Heiser is a, such a good play, but, I mean, the up the middle line is totally there also. 
it is it's just low ceiling it's it's basically got to be pured five feet off the ground for 380 feet and then catch a little slide yeah i'm doing on 14. 14 has a slight change this year as well making it a little bit tougher definitely a good change there is um it's it's a t-box adjustment which makes a swinging hyzer not really that possible um, what people are having to do instead is throw more of like a flat to overstable shot. Um, if you're going to go the backhand line, there's also an up the gut line and even a sidearm. So much skip on this fairway, so it's important that you give your disc plenty of room for it. Drew is, is still kind of throwing a sweeping hyzer, but when he does that, it, it makes the gap a little bit smaller. No problem. That's dead center, and he's looking straight at the pin now. Yeah, stable fairway from him and well played at that. Yeah, okay, another hyzer from Vina. These are, it's a pretty small gap that these guys are, are hitting right there. Pretty good from Vina, no problem there. Yeah. Um, that was an H1 out of him. I, I misspoke. It was an FX2 last hole, H1 this hole. Simon going with a PD2 off the tee. And Skipman kind of over by the OB. He'll have a choice on how he wants to approach the green from there. A few options. Nice. So anybody throwing this hyzer line that we just saw everybody take is going to scoot as far left on the tee box as possible to open up this gap as much as possible. Well done from pretty much everybody. Kale's the furthest. That is a mid-range. I don't know which mid that is. I think it might even be a PA3. You know what? It very well could be. That's a pretty big PA3 shot. Simon going around the tree over the OB it looks like. He is a bit of a risky play unless you're confident in your sidearm. Oh, wow. Executed to perfection. Lean. Ah, close. <laughs> really good shot from Simon there. I like the sidearm as well. Vino going to his M3 mid-range. Yep. Loves this disc. This disc doesn't have too much flip up for him. It, it's pretty much like straight to overstable. Lots of ground play out of it, maybe a bit more than he was desiring, but he'll be left with a chance that he's been knocking down almost all day. So. And Drew. Okay, I have not seen this before. Rarely seen over the sidewalk, Heiser. And other than that roll away, it was played perfectly. It's yeah. just a really fast green. A bunch of dead grass right here. So Vina with another chance at birdie. Oh, missing it and that is going to be some more focus for sure and he's the first one up mm. i'm sure he took his time on this one. Oh no and that's the first three putt of the round that we've seen very unfortunate yeah a little mistake from vino this hole came in as the 12th hardest hole 39 percent of the field was able to get the birdie on it 48 percent put it in circle one in regulation and cameron messerschmitt banged a 76 footer for a par that's um, that's pretty nice. nice. If y'all don't know about Cameron Messerschmitt, he won the putting crown last year. He he wasn't the world champion. That's Ricky Steeler, but he had the highest circle two percentage and then was also high enough in circle one percentage to average being the best putter in the world. Cameron Messerschmitt, keep it up, buddy. There you go. All right, Drew, let's keep it up. Hot streak right here. This is a big putt. It's uh, easy to get some sweat on your hands. It builds up so quickly. It's like you get your hand dry for one second. The next, you got sweaty hands. Yeah, but he bangs it anyways. Well done. And it's hot out there. People are using all sorts of you know whale sacks or sandbags or just grabbing good old dirt off the ground um, to keep that down. When the pressure builds, it seems like uh, it's easy to do that. You see the best in the world doing it. Hole 15 is the final par 4 of the round. This is a really cool hole. Um, obviously, it takes a nice big flex shot if you want to get a bunch of air and play the air shot. Uh, the problem with that is there's these mando trees on the left side. You need to go to the right of them. Sometimes it's common to see people uh, not get enough into their disc and end up in the water. And that water's pretty nasty. You might not get your disc back. Um, other things that can happen uh, is the OB fence to the right. There is some space under it, so if you're throwing a roller, it's definitely possible that you can sneak up under that fence. Um, 
but really like you just need a bunch of distance off this tee yeah yeah it's unlucky to see the roller go over there but it does happen there's really dealer's choice off the tee here it looks like we're gonna see a big amy out of drew i guess uh yeah um and it's gone <laughs> he smashed it what oh. is he doing whoa i think that did go on the right side of the mando i believe he did make the mando the tree he landed at is not a mando tree okay simon opting for a roller and I, apparently that's the veteran play is keeping it on that hillside yep um starting the roller on the hillside makes it more inclined to go down the hill and away from that fence and goodness gracious yeah that's fantastic way down there that makes this hole so much easier Great flex line out of Kale. Yeah, very good angle. Landing flat. He'll be left with a 370, 380 foot approach that he'll have to hyzer big time. What are we seeing Vino with right now? Vino is ripping on a D1. Excuse me, a D model S. That's the same one he threw on five that went past everybody. Okay, so he's liking the D model S for those big flex shots, it looks like. 750 D1 out of Kale, looking for the big skit. Miss and it. Another one. He needs another one. Yeah. More. Oh my goodness. That's such. That's such a good play. It's the play that I drop in my head for the hole. You can go high, but if you do that skip shot, it kind of turns your disc like vertical. And there's a couple trees late in the the shot that would pretty much stop you from having a putt. So mm. Vina does get his way around them. Yeah. But it's nice to be long enough off the tee that you have the good hyzer high route. Oh, wow. Drew, okay, wow. Low flex fairway. Oh, my goodness. That, that was is a touchy shot, people. Man, that was purdy. Do me a favor. Rewind that. Watch it again. That is literally textbook. Yeah, that's an awesome shot. He will be cashing in another birdie. Yeah, nose angle under control. Simon's so far that he's throwing a flick. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty hard to imagine like going far enough to to make that upshot a flick is is pretty special yeah the mandos don't even play oh my goodness what a pretty putt he makes those circle two caches look so easy that was butter wow this whole plate is the fifth hardest hole on the course only 22 percent of the field was able to pick up the birdie on it as a good 28-footer from Kale. Yeah. Looks like we're going to have a star frame on this hole. Incredible. Did you already say the handicap of this hole? I did. It's the fifth hardest. Wow. Yeah. Coming in at over par, playing 4.2 average. Taking his time. Yeah, can't argue that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> good focus, though. You know, do whatever you have to do to get the disc in the basket. That's yeah, the I mean, whenever you're one tip I got from the Rick, the bit Ricky Wysocki is if you're feeling nervous, take an extra second because the nerves aren't going anywhere. Drew, shooting arrows. <laughs> didn't know Paige is averaging over 10 20 for this tournament playing many of the tees that the guys are it's incredible to see the level she's playing at really is good yeah no doubt about it she's bringing it to a new level we've got three more holes for you guys on moving day this is hole 16 arguably the toughest green on the course it shapes it is without a doubt a sidearm hole the only thing is sidearm and and this hillside don't get along very well 
a backhand and the hillside do get along, but the room for error with a backhand is just tiny. Like, you can't mess it up at all. So let's see Drew. Can he do it? With a mid-range. Mid-range? That's going to help. It's going to minimize his drift to the left. And oh. literally, due to the mid-range, he stays in bounds. If that had been a fairway, it would have been gone. No doubt about it. This looks good from Simon. This is what you want, a low, flat sidearm. Not quite the distance he was looking oh, for. No. Oh, he... oh, wow. Not a terrible result, though. I think, okay, yeah. I mean, you can roll out of bounds <laughs> so easy. I think that's basically what you're saying. You know? Yeah. To roll yeah. away and not go out of bounds is okay. That's a mid-range from Kale. Well, if he were, yeah, he'd have to put some crazy height on that to get the mid there. That's for sure. Yeah. Also a mid-range from Vino. These guys crush. I didn't even consider a mid-range. No, it's... I think it's close yeah. to out of my mid-range for sure. But you have such a great forehand. That that's obviously the play for you. Oh, my gosh. Look at the nose angle, meeting the hill, getting a little slide, but you can't throw it any better. That was so difficult, guys. Simon just laying up. Get in. Good, say, good wow. action. I, mean, I anytime you throw a putt that doesn't go in, liable to roll. Oh, uh, for sure. Darn, really wanted that one for Vina. Him throwing a mid that close is you don't want crazy. This putt. Trust me, you don't want this putt. No, luckily he can see a good portion of the basket. Yeah, and he, luckily he's a great putter. Yeah, this uh, as we as we tap in, I can now tell you that due to the tricky green. Eight people three-putted. Two of those were actually four putts. This green is insane. These people had opportunities for birdie and walked off with fives. Oh. <laughs> It'll happen to anybody. You just got to put your disc in the basket. That's, that's the end of it. Yeah, it's important on this one. Hole 17. Luke, is this the easiest hole on the course? You got it. Comes in as the easiest hole on the course, averaging 2.61. 56% of the two is getting birdie. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say that this is a sidearm hole, but if you're looking for an ace run, it's definitely right there for a sidearm because he can hit that backstop and have a good putt at it. Good shot from, yes, oh, perfect. good shot from Drew. What is that hook lag disc? I believe it's a firebird. I'm thinking so too. Simon going P2, I'm going to guess. Yep, right about that. That's fine. Yeah, well done. A little high on the hill. Occasionally, you're left with wind up the hill, which makes the the putt tricky. Even though you're level with the green, the wind isn't level. It's coming up the hill, so it makes it a little bit trickier. The physics of an uphill putt like that um, aren't as straightforward as you know they look. I'd say that's something to think about for sure. Good spread from these guys. I like the backhand putter plays. Yeah, you're minimizing the opportunity for a, a skip or a roll backwards. There isn't a wall there this year, so you can roll out of bounds low. That is very true. And our card showing why it's the easiest hole on the course. 75% of the field was able to put this in circle one. Um, and like we said, 56% of them were able to convert. There were 35 OBs, though. Kind of funny. Oh, wow. Not funny, I guess. <laughs> Not funny, but it can happen. I, I bet there are a few of those that were rollaways as well. Yeah, that are just floating a little long. All right, final hole of the round, hole 18. I, I mean, if I were to guess the scores on this, I'd say we're probably going to have three pars, but... It's hole 18. Everybody's tired. Everybody, it's easy to, first of all, not commit quite enough or to overcommit and pass this triple mando. But I, I don't think anybody's going to be going for it unless somebody's just really like on tilt, on tilt, trying to make a move. Yeah. This is a good point for Drew to just lay up and yeah. turn in a really good round. Yeah, he fist pumped as well. Like I he's, think he was like a sit down. I think he overjuiced it a little bit. He was obviously oh. playing the layup oh. and thought that he may have gone towards the Mando. So he was just like, oh, Simon, obvious layup play there. Yep. You'll see that this out of much of the field. It's, I mean, it's a tricky Mando to hit, and even if you hit it, the chances are you could skip in the water. 
And it's just, it's a tough hole. Kale going mid range. MX3? Yeah. That's so cool. Like, he can make it go straight, he can make it go right, and he can make it hyzer. Like, it's just whatever angle he wants, he puts it on that angle and it holds it. Even got some finish there, like on the skip. Yeah, he's a magician and that's his staff. Okay, now that is a tiny bit sawed off from Vina. He needs it to sit. Stop. 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 Wow. Uh, it's. Shoot. He, he's going to at least get shot. a putt. Yeah. Nice shot. Oh, oh my, my. Let's yeah. go, Vina. That is so good, Stop. man. Look at him just watching it. There's no way it's rolling out. He just wants to see where it's sitting. You're not going to find an 80 foot shot that's much more difficult than the one he played. And there's a full skip shot from 80 feet. Yeah. Kale putting it under the pin. Simon was a little bit short. You saw his reaction there. Drew is just going to jump it. Not even jump it. This is the hardest hole on the course. Only 4% of the field got the birdie on it, which is eight birdies. And there was only one park job on it. Ben Calloway with the park job. Just really awesome. Nice. Six, 65 OB strokes um, and 10 people with more than one OB stroke on it. Wow. So that includes a missed Mando. So we've got people missing the Mando, going to the drop zone, and then putting their putt in the water, most likely. It just had a ton of teeth, especially if you tried to get aggressive with it. Yeah. And I will say, I did see Paul Ulibar. He was going to bullseye this hole, and it hit the pin and rolled out of bounds. So oh unfortunate gosh. break for him, but still, like he deserves a shout-out because it was a bullseye in my eyes. Yeah, Vina that. and Kale both are turning in seven under pars, really solid rounds. And Drew... Then bogey free. That's just awesome. Like anytime you're getting 9, 10, 11 at Vista, you're feeling really good. You're gaining strokes on a bunch of people. And Drew might have made himself a lead card appearance. I think he might have. We'll see the scorecard here in a second. But 11 under at Vista. Incredible stuff. So clean. Here is our leaderboard after the moving day of round three. Eagle McMahon with a 10 under par, keeping up an insane pace. He's leading our tournament right now. Yeah, leading it in birdies and park and in circle two putting. He's, at, he's hit seven of the 11 chances he's had from circle two. Incredible. That's crazy. Those are some really important stats that, and the reason why he's up there. Exactly. Thank you guys for joining us for moving day at the 2020 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. You're commentary brought to you by prodigy disc we will see you guys in round four